Revenge Films. My name is Sarah Smith. Ever since my father-in-law passed away, I have been living with my husband, Thomas Smith, and his mother. We've been living with my mother-in-law for about six months now. Unfortunately, my husband and I were struggling to have children of our own. At this point, we were about to go into our fourth year of marriage, and I was starting to sweat it. It was right around that time that I also started to have some concerns about living with Thomas's mother. Until we lived together, I got along well with my mother-in-law, and there weren't any problems between us. However, as soon as we started living together, a certain problem became very clear. My husband had told me that ever since he was a little kid, my mother had prone to having tantrums of her own. And he had told me that he grew up getting hit by her quite a lot. It would be one thing if that had ended when Thomas grew up, but recently she started hitting me over the smallest things. One day when I was in the kitchen as usual cooking dinner for all of us, I was about to put soy sauce into the stew that I was making. But then suddenly out of nowhere, my mother-in-law got angry. Hey, Sarah, what are you doing? If you put that much soy sauce in, it's going to be way too much of a flavor. I'm so sorry as I tried to apologize to her. But before I could finish my sentence, my mother-in-law slapped my hand that I was holding the soy sauce in. Ouch, that hurts. Come on, you need to be more careful. Do you understand that thing? The flavoring is all about it. Don't overdo it. Even when I was cooking, and even if I would be holding a knife in my hands and cutting something, if there was something that bothered her, she would pay no mind to the knife in my hands, saying, That's not how you do it, and slap me. I was shocked that she would hit me when I was holding a knife because that's so dangerous, and yet my mother-in-law didn't seem like she would felt any sort of guilt about it whatsoever, and I became terrified of her. If I would be doing the chores around the house and she didn't like the way that I was doing it, she would say, That's incorrect! And even if I was sitting down, she would push me on the shoulders by trying to get me down. These actions of hers started to escalate and as a result, eventually the incident happened. It happened one day when I was upstairs on the second floor of the cleaning, when suddenly my mother-in-law stormed up the stairs with an angry look on her face. Hey, hey, what are you doing? I wanted to use the vacuum! So why would you come and bring it to the second floor? Give it to me right now! At the top of the stairs, my mother-in-law was trying to force me into physical altercation, and she was pulling the vacuum and trying to wrestle it out of my my hands. Mrs. Smith, please, it's dangerous. Please stop that. At that very moment, my foot slipped off the top of the stairs and I fell down this entire set of stairs. I hit my hip heavily on the ground and I was unable to move from the spot. Ouch. Ouch. When my mother-in-law saw me in so much pain, instead of apologizing, she continued to shout at me from the top of the stairs. How dangerous! What the hell are you doing, you klutz? You need to be more careful, my goodness! At the very moment, I felt inside of me that everything that I had been tolerating up until now had boiled over. Thankfully, although I hit my hip hard on the ground, I didn't have any major injuries and I was able to eventually walk and go back to my regular life. However, it was all because of my mother-in-law that I couldn't forgive her for the way she handled the situation afterwards either. And so, that was what I decided from now on I was going to do exactly what my mother-in-law did to me, right back at her. One day, when I was in the kitchen, cooking as usual, my mother-in-law stormed over to me and slapped my hand. That's not how you do it at all. You don't need to be putting so much soy sauce that you should be using this. No, stop that! This time, I saw my mother-in-law in the hand and grabbed the seasoning from her. Ouch, what do you think you're doing? Stop getting in the way of my cooking and leave me alone. This time, I started chopping the vegetables despite the fact that I was holding a sharp knife in my hand. My mother-in-law tried to come hit me once again. You can't guts the vegetables so roughly this way. Please stop that. It's dangerous. I'm holding a knife. I firmly raised my voice and without thinking, I stepped on my mother-in-law's foot. However, I didn't apologize and proceeded to ignore her. And then my mother-in-law fell on the ground and was obviously trying to put on an act like it hurt. And so, that's why I purposely put on an act, rubbing my hips that I injured and fell down the stairs crying about it. That's how I responded. My mother-in-law was no longer able to say anything and she stormed out of the kitchen. On top of that one day, when I was trying to iron the clothes, I felt her come up behind me and I knew that she was going to try to push me. So instead, I stood my ground, turned around and glared right into her eyes. And then, as though I was lecturing a long child, I spoke very slowly and neatly to her. Do you know how hot an iron is? If you touch it, you're going to get a burn, okay? So please, while I'm ironing clothes, it's very dangerous, so don't push me. How dare you make fun of me like this? You're in the way, so please move. This time, I pushed my mother-in-law's back, but not strong enough that she would fall over. She dramatically raised her voice and then ran away from the living room. After that, whenever I would be watching TV, my mother-in-law would grab the remote and purposely blast the volume. Or, if she knew that I was in the bath, she would turn off all the lights and she started harassing me. Every single time that she'd do that to me, I would do something similar right back at her. And eventually, my mother-in-law started to show her frustration on the surface. But when I thought about the stress that I carried until now, just holding it in, I could only feel like this was appropriate treatment for her. So I continued to do exactly what she did to me right back at her. And in all kinds of ways, I continued over the course of weeks to get back at her. A few weeks later, perhaps she had reached her limit of her patience. And finally, my mother-in-law went crying to my husband about it. I'm home. Thomas, you have to help me. Your wife is abusing me. She keeps hitting me. At this rate, I'm gonna get hurt. My body can't take it anymore. Huh? Is this real? Thomas, all I was doing wrong was what exactly your mother was doing to me right back at her. You're the one who always raises your hand and hits me first, Mrs. Smith. What are you saying? I never hurt you ever. Your wife is the only one that suddenly started hitting me out of nowhere. My mother-in-law tried to deny anything and say that she hadn't raised a finger towards me. But because my husband grew up getting hit by her ever since she was a child, he didn't believe her for a second. I bet you were the one who was throwing a tantrum and you hit Sarah, didn't you, Mom? Just like you did to me when I was a little kid. 
Just be honest and acknowledge it! Are you really gonna take her side of your stupid wife over the one and only mother? You have always been a liar, as long as I've known you, Mom! But Sarah has never once lied to me! That's why I'm going to believe what Sarah says! What the hell? All I did was hit her just a little bit! When my mother-in-law said that, she realized that she had let it slip. She put her hand over her mouth immediately. See? I knew it! So you did hit her! I can't believe that you would hit my wife! You're the worst! How can we ever live in this house with you, knowing that that's how you treat her?! My husband was furious, and this time my mother-in-law said the most outrageous thing. Your wife can't even make children! She's worthless and useless! So what's wrong with hitting her? What did you just say?! So what if she can't make children?! I can't forgive you for what you just said! Apologize to Sarah right now! Well, if you're stressed out, it makes it even more difficult to have children. I indirectly blamed my mother-in-law for the reasons why we weren't able to have children. And that was when my husband declared that we weren't going to live with her anymore. This time, my mother-in-law lost it, and she said, Fine, do whatever you want! And after that, she stormed out of the room. After that, my mother-in-law remained furious, and even though we were still living in the same house, she refused to talk to me. But as time went on, we were able to find a great apartment, and the two of us rented a new place and moved out. Once I was free of living with my mother-in-law, perhaps I was able to let go of a lot of stress. Because three months after we moved out, I discovered that I was pregnant! When I told my husband that we were finally pregnant, he cried tears of happiness. But then, there was one other person who had been waiting all this time to give birth. When my mother-in-law found out that I was pregnant, even though she was so furious with me before, suddenly she tried sucking up to me. And then, without any apology of an acknowledgement of the past, she started saying that we were going to live together again. I was so stunned that I didn't even have words to respond. When my husband refused to live with her, my mother-in-law lost her temper and threw a tantrum over the phone. That's why we decided not to answer the phone for a while, even though she kept calling over and over again. Not long after that, I entered my second trimester, and we were feeling relieved about the pregnancy, and suddenly one day, my mother-in-law showed up at the door. My husband happened to be off work that day, so I had him go into the door, and as soon as he did, my mother pushed her way into our apartment. Hey! You can't just show up here like that! And you can't just barge into our apartment! What are you talking about? Starting today, I'm going to be living here! It's decided! What? I don't know what you're talking about! We never discussed this! Well, too bad, because I already put up the family house for sale! You're joking, right? Why would you do that without talking to me about it first? You're telling me that you sold the house where we had all of our memories with Dad? What the hell have you done? If I have to live in such a house by myself, then obviously it's much better for me to live with you! Come on, now hurry up and carry all my things inside! Are you kidding me? There's no way that we were ever going to live together with you! Now hurry up and get out! My husband was completely furious, and he told his mother that he was going to cut all ties with her and try to kick her out. As she was crying and begging at the door, once she was outside, he locked the door in her face. Because my mother-in-law had already sold the family house, she had nowhere else left to go, and she kept trying to call my husband on the phone countless times. Eventually, my husband lost his patience eventually and blocked her. From that day forward, we never once had a contact with his mother ever again. After that, Thomas's mother was stuck having to sleep in cafes until she could find a new place to live. And then she eventually found an old apartment for her to live by herself. She was going to be sending her retirement alone. As for me, I gave birth to a healthy baby girl, and I'm living a happy life with my family of three. The more time goes by, I've started to think that maybe I could forgive my mother-in-law, but my husband says that he never wanted to get involved with her ever again, and so I just wanted to build a warm, stress-free household with my husband for a daughter. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more!